Hi, I'm Richard, a professional admissions consultant, and over the last 10 years, I've helped hundreds of students into top business schools for finance and management programs. And I'm joined here today by the brilliant Joe Miller. Hi, my name's Joe. I studied at LSE in Oxford before working at an investment bank. For the last four years, I've worked professionally helping hundreds of students secure um, positions at the best universities in Britain and beyond. And the question we get asked all the time is, which finance degree should I apply to? Which is the best? We're going to keep this discussion mainly focused on the UK because there's a lot to get through. Right, Joe, you've been a banker, you've done LSE, you've done Oxford. What's your number one finance degree? I think for me, you, you absolutely can't go wrong with, with Oxbridge. Um, Oxford's Master's in Financial Economics course is second to none. Um, probably the most academically rigorous business school type course there is in the UK, highest GMAT average. Um, and I think that Oxford stamp of approval still triumphs um, just about any other university in the country. What do you think? Uh, see, I, I'm torn. I'm kind of probably disagree. Maybe it's because I'm an LSE boy myself, but LSE Finance, MSC for me, is the most prestigious course in the UK for a post graduate. I think Oxford MFE is you know, pretty much on the same level. I just think that LSE Finance, it's just better named and it's what LSE is known for. If you want to go and work at Goldman Sachs, you want to be going into LSE. I mean, both have a GMAT requirement, uh, both have over 700. You pretty much have to have a first class to be considered. I have that on good terms from the admissions department at LSE itself. And I think just employability, LSE slightly pips it for me. I think it depends on the course as well, right, at LSE. I mean, LSE gives you so much option, straight finance, accounting and finance, finance and private equity now. I had a guy just before Christmas get an offer for finance and private equity. Right um, and he did in turn in private equity before. He's now going to go and work in private equity. Um, and you probably can't find a course that's going to pay you more or is going to open par paths, doors, to those types of high-paid buy side finance roles than the LSE finance and private equity course. So maybe I concede a little bit that yes, LSE being in London with those sort of alternative finance degrees, they, they certainly do make you stand out. I think it's the financial economics is so, con I mean, they're all quantitative freaks, but yeah. it's so hardcore on the maths and the coding. If you want to do the maths behind it, go into Oxford. If you want to be the smartest person in the room, go to Oxford. But LSE has all those others. Yes, finance and private equity, it's just rebranded the same course with some options chosen for you. But they've also got all those other courses in of capital markets and risk. You can go more financial, go less financial into accounting and finance and economic and finance, a bit of kind of leaning into management. I think. I just recommend LSE because there's something for everybody there, whereas Oxford's very specifically only for those who can get a really high GMAT score. Mm. But there's still loads of others coming. You've mentioned Oxbridge, um, Cambridge. Would you put that above LSE or below LSE? I mean, for starters, I think Cambridge is a real point of confusion. Almost all of my clients, their parents and whoever it is I speak to always ask this because at Cambridge, you've got the MPhil finance, <laughs> the MFIN finance, and then the MPhil finance and economics. And a lot of people ask, well, well what, Why which one's for me? <laughs> um, and, and the cut and thrust of it is um, MPhil finance is for people that have less than a year experience, but it's still an academic research heavy course. The MFIN finance is for somebody with more experience and therefore perhaps better suited if you are looking to launch your career in finance after two years. And then the MPhil Finance and Economics is largely taught by the economics faculty at Cambridge anyway. So again, more academic. So I think, look, Cambridge has the same stamp of approval as, as Oxford. I think it's just slightly more confusing, a little less career driven, which perhaps puts people off. And so, yes, I think it's going to open doors. Um, would I rank it up there with Oxford and LSE? Probably not for that reason. Yeah, it's a good point, right? If you really are interested in the... Um, finance as a subject. If you want to go and write some great uh, research, we've had candidates who exactly. really want to study it. They, I've had candidates who have 10 years running uh, their companies or government uh, wings uh, of their uh, companies and they still really want to do a 
big proper thesis, something a bit like a PhD, and that's where I say finance is absolutely at Cambridge, what you're looking for with that optionality. Um, of course, we have to mention, I'm surprised it's been this long, LBS, London yeah. Business School. Now, some people still haven't heard of LBS around the world, which blows my mind because it probably is the best business school in my mind. It's up there, absolutely with INSEAD and MIT in my mind. I love their courses. I, my students, uh, I send to LBS, enjoy LBS more than any others. And I like they have a clear distinction. Something that I think makes them uh, slightly easier than the finance courses. They've got their masters in financial analysis for those who don't have work experience or up to two years. Mm. And then they've got their straight MSc masters in finance for over two years. And that's good because you don't always want to be with people more or less experienced than you. I love the course. I like that separation. It does require a GMAT, although they're pretty generous. We've had a, we've helped tens of students get the waiver for that MFA course, which is great. Um, I would put that as a very close number three behind Oxford and LSE. Yeah, I, I tend to agree. I mean, I think the MFA, the MFA at LBS had a tough time this year. The FT knocked it down to sixth in Europe. It's it's been moved down in a few of the rankings, but. Across the last 10 years, it's consistently one of the top 10, if not top five, if not top business schools in Europe. The MFA course is, is terrific. It's so good. Most people will graduate. I think the median starting salary is around £55,000 a year. A good majority of students, particularly those that take it back to North America, end up on a six-figure salary. So Huge. it is a return on investment. With all of these scholarships that they're now offering, especially to... to uh, young women. Um, it's attracting a far more diverse cohort and it is really, really appealing. So I, just like with management, you know, it's hard to ignore LBS. I had a student get a £33,000 scholarship last week for LBS, which suddenly makes it quite cheap, actually. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. An amazing investment. You'll get that back in about six months. Um, yeah, love LBS. Now, you mentioned the FT, and the FT rankings are generally, for universities regarded, the most rigorous and I generally agree with them over other rankings, but I absolutely, personally disagree. They consistently put the French business schools above the UK business schools, and I think in 2021, all five were French schools. And I'll shout out, I love the HSC degree. I think it's brilliant, it's kind of build a bear approach where you have so much optionality, certificates, and I love that course. That's the only one I consider leaving the UK for. But in my mind, absolutely, LSE, Oxford, LBS, um, beat all the others. Yeah, I mean, surprisingly, I think it, maybe 2022 as well, the top four were all French. And I think my favourite French university for Masters, INSEAD, wasn't even in that top four. So, yeah, look, you always have to take uh, rankings with a pinch of salt. There are lots of different rankings. Look at all of them, is what I tell my candidates. QS, Times, FT, and so on. Um, but ultimately, if you're looking to take your master's back to North America, back to Asia, or even stay in the UK, stay in London, then as far as English speaking, business school finance masters go, you're not going to do much better than Oxbridge and London. Now, I've got a slightly sneaky option here as well. <laughs> go on. So a lot of students want to apply to finance. Many students want to go into finance. It's the highest paying gig in the world, right? but they don't have that first class, or maybe they don't want to do the GMAT. I love Imperial and UCL's management courses, their pre-experienced management courses, because they have these specialisms and pathways, which means you can have management with a finance specialism. You can do basically two thirds of a finance degree. And of course, it's a really, really good route into finance because you still get those good brands. So for those on a 2-1, ideally a high 2-1, no experience, I think those courses are really, really good backdoors. I think they deserve an honorable mention for those who don't have a first class or a you know, 720 GMAT. Yeah, it's a very common conversation I have with a lot of clients and parents. And that is, you know, son or daughter wants to work in finance, they either don't have a lot of experience or their experience is in non-finance. Do we just write them off for finance or is there an option? And the option usually is, well, have a look at UCL's management masters, look at the finance pathway on that if you can, otherwise the corporate pathway still lets you do those finance electives. And it's brilliant. I mean, UCL have pumped so much money into this Canary Wharf campus just around the corner from here. Um, and it's amazing, you know, the networking opportunities. I've got several students there now, people that I help get in and now I continue coaching. And the career opportunities and the networking opportunities that they have are second to none. So 
yeah, I think for those kind of candidates, UCL makes complete sense. All right, so I think our rankings are somewhere LSE and Oxford. I think we're in disagreement, is what you're saying. <laughs> it's good, but we, we, yeah. this is what we do all day. We disagree yeah. and we end up giving that. I think our clients love them when we're sharing these tips um, because they're going to apply to all of them, right? Um, LBS probably closer. We like the French business schools. So common set, I'd say, is if you've got the grades, LSE and Oxford, LBS and HEC with some backups at Imperial and and, and that's without even getting on to the Americans, which is going to need to be another video altogether, <laughs> right? Because there's a lot of them. Really, yeah. there's some pretty good universities in America. Yes, there are. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much, Joe. Amazing to have your experience on this. And if you would like to uh, supercharge your application, we do have a 92% success rate of getting students on their first or second. And for finance, it is a whopping 79% of first choice university and it's always one of those that we have mentioned here today if you'd like to work with someone like myself joe one of the fantastic admissions uh, consultants or ex admissions officers in our network we'd love to help you using the information on screen now now if you found this helpful please do like and subscribe if you have a budding question leave us a comment we work really hard to get back to all those comments to help you out however we can lastly from us good luck <laughs>